Hello and welcome to today's video. So on the workbench today we have an Evnetics Soliton 1. Uh, this one was sent in because it was having a uh, pre-charged timeout error. And uh, sure enough, uh, both pre-charged resistors were toast, completely burned out. So uh, they're now both open circuits, so that would explain why it can't pre-charge. I've since uh, replaced them with um, uh, bigger resistors, those are the ones I happen to have for high over wattage. Um, I guess these were, these used to be 1.8k resistors and then I ended up putting in uh, 1.3k resistors just because I didn't have any large wattage. That was the closest large wattage resistor I had. Uh, it should be fine for pre-charge. All it's doing is pre-charging that capacitor. Now the question is why did they burn up? So typically, if your pre-charge resistors are dead, uh, it means that there's a big capacitor in here. Either that capacitor is shorted or something in the power stage is shorted uh, such that the pre-charge resistors are on and you're commanding a throttle and the current, rather than flowing through your contactors, has to flow through the pre-charge resistors and that burns them up. Uh, contactors work. Everything on here works. So either it was just a momentary glitch or after emailing the customer, uh, it says the vehicle that this is out of was in storage for a while and uh, the 12 volt auxiliary bower, uh, battery that powers the drive um, was really dead. <laughs> so the only thing I can think of is if you look, the pre-charge resistor here, or the pre-charge relay, only needs 5 volts to turn on, whereas the contactors down here, uh, right there and right there, need 12 volts to turn on. So, my my only working theory is the battery was had just enough voltage to get the drive to power up and everything. Pre-charge closed, but the contactors didn't have enough uh, voltage to pull them in, and this drive doesn't have a way to check, doesn't check that the uh, contactors are closed and current was pulled through the pre-charge resistors when you hit the throttle. That's that's literally the only thing I can think of. I, I don't know. It's either that or there's some momentary thing, but I've power cycled it a bunch of times and I haven't gotten it to fault out here. I can even show you. So I've got my meter hooked up. Well, here, um, you know, we're plugged into the wall. We're a little safer this time. We're going through... Uh, my isolation transformer here, which is uh, upcycled out of a bad UPS unit, so it takes in 120, generates 48 volts AC, which then goes into another transformer and converts it back to 120. So, yeah, 120 in, 48, 48, 120. Um, <laughs> it works. And then that's plugged into the Variac, which is then plugging into the old capacitor of Doom, which is just a bridge rectifier, a couple of resistors to bleed it off. And um, that's generating our DC voltage here for the drive. I've got the meter here hooked up. It is on the precharger side. So this is the uh, ground coming in. They switched the ground side and it's precariously down there to measure the voltage uh, as it precharges. So uh, when we turn it on, the relay will click on. It'll pre-charge, we'll see this get up to about 170 volts, and then the drive will power up, and we'll be able to uh, spin the motor. So I'll go ahead and show you that here by flipping on main power. Oh, actually, we'll do this. So flip that on. See, it's pre-charging, and the contactor's clicked in. And now it's ready to go. I can uh, refresh the uh, website back here, and... You don't have any error messages anymore, so that's good. Used to have a big red uh, pre-charge timeout. We got the green flashy light here. And then I can go ahead and uh, with the pot here, give it a little throttle. And it uh, should make the motor start spinning. Yeah, since this is a torque control, I, the motor just goes to full throttle, but I might be able to get it. If I get on the hairy edge, it'll, it'll kind of PWM it, but it's working. You can 
when when I accelerate, you can hear it ramping in the current. This thing only switches. It sounds like it switches around eight kilohertz, so it's pretty audible. I don't know if that shows across. Uh, shows up on the. Phone. Anyways, it's it's working now. So. Yeah, I. <laughs> I don't know what. I, I'm gonna call it fixed. But. Yeah, I I, I haven't really found uh, a good. I mean, there's nothing short of the ground um, that would cause the precharger to pass enough current through the resistors to get it hot enough to melt them. I mean, it like melted the circuit board and the uh, insulator. I actually flipped the insulator 180 degrees and put some tape underneath where it was so that the, the high voltage section, uh, that little box that says high voltage there, at least that's the section that has the uh, insulator underneath it to make it, uh, you, know, a conti you know, one continuous piece of insulator. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna call it fixed. Even though, yeah, well, it, it's got bigger precharge resistors in there, or higher wattage, <laughs> but, yeah, I would rather have found something shorted in it so that I could guarantee that it's fixed, but maybe it was just a low battery, and, um, so if you've got one of these, uh, Soliton, or even the Soliton Junior, uh, be aware of, um, uh, turning them on with a low battery voltage low 12 volt battery or weak 12 volt battery uh, might cause issues so um, if you do if you do do that and you get the um, pre-charge timeout error uh, just open her up and uh, swap out these two resistors right there and uh, should be good as good <laughs> should be good to go anyways uh, thanks for watching bye